the arsonist had oddly shaped feet. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Gravy Wheels. You know me, obviously, um, and I've always wanted to do a podcast, and I've actually had multiple circles of friends, both online um, and from high school and stuff, that I've kind of brought up the idea of doing a podcast, and it's kind of not really gone anywhere, obviously, because uh, you've never seen one from me, but I have a group of friends here with me today, uh, Andrew and Frank, that uh, here in a second, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and give a little bit of a backstory on how we all met and everything, uh, but long story short, we have started Gravy Wheels, and before I get too far, I want you guys to know that we have started a brand new YouTube channel, uh, Twitter account, Facebook, Instagram. As I say this, that's actually a bold-faced lie, but all those links, by the time you guys are listening to this, will be it in will the description. Be yeah, and go over there, check those things out. The plan for now is to be uploading it here on my channel. Uh, but eventually, uh, we will probably wean off of that once we get some people that are interested in listening to us idiots talk. And, uh, yeah, so that's the whole thing. So, uh, I guess first, Andrew, say hello. Hi, it's me. You know me. <laughs> no, you don't. I know you. Um, well, yeah, you know me but a little bit. We've, uh, yeah, you met me when I was what? Uh, 16, 17, probably? Junior year, apparently, right? Junior year of high school. 17, if you yes, know that's right. what I mean. Uh, and I was forced to leave my beloved home of Kansas City and move out to the middle of nowhere. And when sadly. he says that, he I really mean, means mean. that. Really means that. People don't understand. Uh, whenever I say that I'm from a small town... It really means that I'm from a small town. I mean, there was, I think, 28 or some, right? something like that. Maybe one of you guys know in our graduating class. I think something like that. It was like right around 30. Your graduating class. Ooh, awkward. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah. I remember like, I remember pulling into the town for the first time and seeing the population sign said something like 275 people. Less than that, but yes. Yeah. Oh well, there, there were two yeah, of them, and right. they had. Two, yeah, yeah. There were two signs. There was one on either end of the town, and each one had conflicting information. But either <laughs> way, that's that's, that's how one. that's how small. Yeah. Yeah. And you and you came from. Was it just can't like where exactly? Yeah, I, I mean not exactly. Don't give me your address, but. Well, I lived in World. No, I lived. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in Kansas City, in uh, north of the river. So in the I don't know the. In a van. Yeah, <laughs> and it ran yeah. on the north side of the river. Right, right. So just much bigger school. Yeah, much bigger school, but also like we had things like stores and a gas station that was open more than right. like one day. Right, it's true. We did have a store, but I mean, there wasn't really anything there. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of. You could had get a gas. Store. Yeah. yeah, you get watered down gas, um, cans of pork and beans, ramen Expired. noodles. Probably came from like whatever that place is where you go and just get the free food that all the stores throw away. Yeah. But the bush light and natural light was always fresh. But yeah, it's all that mattered. Yeah. So that's that's Frank, or I mean, uh, that's Andrew, yeah, I guess. That's and me. Uh, and then the uh, other voice. Yeah, Frank. Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Frank. Whew. Go ahead, man. Frank needs no introduction, but also <laughs> really does. Of, the sound of beer <laughs> that, cracking in that's the all you need to know right there. It's not a beer. Anyways, my name is Frank. Uh, you'll get to know me. <laughs> oh, God, mm -hmm. will you get to know Frank? We apologize in advance, Andrew and I. I was born and raised in uh, Missouri. <clears throat> that way. In, the middle, in the middle of nowhere. In the, literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh and then, you know, Joey moved in, and we were good friends. I guess that's true. Technically, you're the OG of this. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Joey's... Uh, that's something they're going to have to get used to as well. Whenever he's saying Joey, that's me, by the way, guys. I'm yeah, why exposed. didn't you introduce your own, your own self? Well, they know me. I'm Joe, Jehovah. Um, most people these days call me joe or jehovah in every realm of life i'm used to but uh a lot of my old school friends like these guys still call me joey some of my family still calls me joey too that's true that's, I that's didn't the only know way that... i've ever the only so way you I've prefer ever joe now well the you thing is, is that I, 
think about it, the only reason I didn't go by Joe is because in the class of 30 that we had, there was two fucking Joes. There's two yeah, Josephs. There was, there was a big guy Joe, and there was a... a... Big Joe and Little Joe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, All but right. that's why I was Joey. I really didn't like like it or dislike it at the time. I just think, you know, the older I got, I was like, eh, Joe's better. Okay. But anyways, go yeah. ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Um, Small town living in a lonely world of corn and soybean and then uh which I'm i worked at you <laughs> i worked at a university for about 10 11 years after high school 10 years 10 months uh and then i ended up in kansas city not really kansas city but um yeah the so, area there you go yeah I'm a and then mechanic. yeah he's he's the all-around um He's the all-around guy. He's the guy that, if anything happens at the bowling alley, he gets he gets the call. And I guess Andrew, you didn't go over uh, where you ended up oh, yeah, and what you're currently a, doing. That's a good point. I I moved around a little bit after high school, and then, uh, long story short, got married, had a had a child, and ended up in uh, in Brooklyn. I live in New York right now. That's where I'm doing this Brooklyn. from. Which was fun a couple weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, during this whole like pandemic type situation, we've been juggling things and moving around. So we came back to Kansas for a little bit, like stay with some family, stay with my wife's relatives, and explain because to... there's going to be some really upset um, snowflakes if you don't explain that you self quarantined. Before. Oh, yes, I did. I mean, when we came back to Kansas, we rented an Airbnb and we stayed there for two full weeks being totally responsible. You know, just hold up, would only go to like the grocery store when we needed to and all that just to make sure, you know, we're, we're taking shit seriously. Right. But you're back now. We're back now. We're back now. We're set up. Yeah. Trying to get things back on the rails. Didn't they send like a destroyer? to New York City for like a mobile hospital. I remember reading that. Yeah, I I mean, I don't That's see it when insane. I look out my window, but that'd be really cool. It's like a battleship, like an aircraft carrier. Yeah, I wish I had water in my window. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um again, this is our podcast obviously, but this whole idea kind of came This is weird. So, I think we also have to kind of explain that we didn't really talk for like all three of us for like almost a decade, if not a decade. I mean, I'm not exactly sure where the math is there, but uh, no, it kind of it's a good estimate, though. A couple months ago, I mean, I don't think any of us were really talking. I mean, I, I talked to Frank uh, here and there. You, I don't really remember. I, yeah, we talked a while, like a few years ago. I think we connected again on Facebook and, you know, caught up a little bit and then just kind of fell back into our lives and and yeah. whatever but then we've all kind of we've all just started talking um within the last couple months because funny enough actually you you Andrew hit me up because of uh a, a little meme uh the Uno meme he I think he I think his exact word maybe not his exact words but he hit me up on Facebook or whatever and he was like he's like dude you're did you ask me I don't remember you, you I, basically I, I think I might have just sent it to you, and I was like, so I was enjoying I think you this. verified or something. Yeah, yeah you're like, was, is this you? I was like, I was enjoying this this little bit of content that I had seen, and it was like something that I, I had seen that, that Uno clip get turned into a whole bunch of different things and like had been done by different voice actors and like... That's right. You did settings. like a you linked like a specific one to me. It was like Castlevania yeah. or something. I think. yeah. There was a specific Castlevania one that yeah. I liked and like thought it was hysterical. And then I was like, so one day I was at home and I was just trying to figure out what the origin was because it's like <laughs> I love tracking down like how memes start. Right. And finding out that it was my fucking friend from high school <laughs> whose voice I was actually hearing like doing this ranting was like. I felt like that was a pretty good signal that I should probably like reach out to him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's such a fucking random thing. It's crazy. And then Frank and I, we reconnected a little bit, probably mostly because, again, I think we had talked a couple times here and there over the last, you know, decade or whatever, uh, but nothing too crazy. And then um, all of a sudden we ended up going to a mutual friend's bachelor party last summer. 
and uh, through that, you know, I, I think through that, like, not to get all ushy gushy, but I was like, man, I miss hanging out with Frank. Like, you know, we were like really close friends in high school, and uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to. And it was weird because I remember at one point specifically, I was on Facebook talking to Frank, and I was also talking to Andrew at the same time. And I'm like, why the fuck am I like having, you know, separate conversations, <laughs> catching up? I was like, we just need to make a group chat. And I just did it. And then from there, uh, you know, we've been trying to keep in touch, obviously. And we've been talking like every day since then, actually. So uh, it's been kind of cool. So um, not that you guys probably care too much about that stuff. But I think, you know, one of the reasons we're doing this podcast is we thought it'd be a cool way, basically a, a good excuse to, you know, kind of kind of keep in touch. So, yeah. Something yeah. that we clearly needed because we are shit at it otherwise. Right. Exactly. I want to bring something up because Frank, going back to that uh, that bachelor party, mm-hmm. one thing that <laughs> during that bachelor party, uh, my buddy Frank here had all of his fingers and then we started all talking in a group chat and all of a sudden Frank like showed a picture of his hand and he had a nub on one of his fingers. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I was just hanging out with you in person not too many months ago, and now you're, like, missing a finger. So uh, you want to tell that story, man? I And it, I know it's super disappointing because he doesn't have a webcam right now. He's going to hopefully have one by next episode, but uh, <laughs> and he can prove it. We're not just making this up. He actually I still st- have. I, I won't get into yeah, details. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. You can tell. So a couple weeks after the bachelor party. Uh, <laughs> still, he got still, drunk. <laughs> He's still drunk. Still drunk, yeah. Half, yeah. Uh, I got called into work early, had a machine to fix, and uh, I did something stupid, even though I had done it um, literally probably 30 times before or more, and uh, finger went in the wrong place and uh, just completely gone. What a classic story. Just That's the just tip. how it goes, just isn't the it? Tip. Yeah. It so, looked a okay. little more than the tip to me. Uh, not enough to get the big money. I basically got screwed over, so... Uh, <laughs> When they do the amputation, um, if they don't do it past the first joint, it's considered a laceration, even though they technically bring out, like, uh, snippers and snip the bone and shit and amputate it. Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, it's considered a laceration if it's before the first joint. So uh, if you're going to lose a digit, lose the whole thing, guys. You'll get more money. Um, yeah, so I- how did that work? Did it just <laughs> you, you file it on your insurance, or did your work do something, or how? Uh, work? Workman's comp, and it's 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 taken forever. And of course, because of quarantine, you can't go in front of the judge. Right. You know, so who knows? Who knows? Whenever I'm going to get, I don't know the the three dollars and fifty cents that they owe me for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, never being able to type properly, ruined trigger finger. Can't pick my nose anymore. It's a big disappointment. You said You'll sometimes you have that phantom phantom limb syndrome, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Um, you guys know what a hangnail feels like, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. Okay. So sometimes I get a feeling of like a hangnail, and uh, there's no fingernail there, but I got the hangnail <laughs> feeling. So that's uh, it sucks. Sounds like fun, and you still have the finger, right? Yeah, I kept it. I preserved it. Um, I think I've sent you guys pictures. Yeah, I, I preserved oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah, I, you have. I preserved yeah, it the wrong been. way. Go I ahead, explain. A, I put it on looks like a, It looks like a piece of a mummy. Yeah, yeah like I didn't think it. <laughs> I didn't think it was real. Like the first time I saw it, I don't know. I just I think it's because I was just hanging out with you and I saw all your fingers, so I was really weirded out by it. <laughs> no, so uh, it looks like uh, something you would see at the National Museum of History. It looks like a mummy's finger. It does. It's, yeah, it still has a fingernail. Yeah, a fingernail. Well, well, sh- should we show blue. it? I think we should show it. We Maybe, no, we we'll ask. We will. We'll ask. Let's ask. What do you guys think? That, comment down below. Do you want to see Frank's preserved finger that he Horribly changes preserved. the salt out, I think, once a week, you said? Yeah, once a week, just to get all the moisture out. Because uh, right. I'm going to put it in a bowling ball plug, and it might end up in a bowling ball. Uh, so, like, instead yeah. of a rose, you're going to have just a thumb in the middle. Uh, just a tip, yeah. Yep. It'll, yeah, be like a really, it'll be like a really shitty version of the bowler from Mystery Men. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Instead Dude, of her that, father's head. I'm excited about that. Right. 
Or the rose from Kingpin, that's what I was getting at, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thumb is way fucking better, let's be honest. <laughs> um, Frank, didn't you say something about uh, an ad read? Yeah, so it's kind of weird that we just started. We haven't even really started this podcast, but we already have sponsors, guys. It's, A lot it's of crazy. Interest. Yeah, um, we're going to be a hot product. And we turned down order. most of them. It's true. Um, but let me, I, we got about five companies here, but I'm just going to pick one of them right now. And then uh, Uncle Jed's Moonshine Mouthwash. Okay. Only if we're in Missouri and he's in Brooklyn, but this place is out of Tennessee, but it's weird. I think he just muted himself. Frank. <laughs> Frank, I think you muted yourself, bud. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all broken now. What was that? There you go. I, you muted your, like you right after you said moonshine, I think, basically. I didn't press anything. It what was is- muted. You, you found a hotkey somehow with your phantom limb. Do <laughs> you, you want to start running up to that again? All right. <laughs> Uncle Jed's Moonshine Mouthwash. It's the only mouthwash that is proven to act as a replacement for a dentist. For when you want to forget about your bleak existence in Appalachia, numb your toothaches, and and your teeth will never have to be pulled again. They just fall out. Uh, and now they have uh, fun-sized bottles for your kids. And that's Uncle Jed's Moonshine Mouthwash. Look for it at your nearest discount smoke and liquors. And do we have a discount code for that, or...? Yeah, that would be uh, Hova. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gravy wheels. We're sharing yeah, that, that money. That's right. Yeah. You get 10% off, uh, listeners, and we get 30% of it's the total It's a good product. Cost, yeah. So. It's, yeah. it's a good product. I use it at home. Highly and recommend. like I said, now it's, uh, it's having a fun size bottles for your kids, too. So uh, every, every bottle perfect. you buy, they actually send us 30% of the bottle. Yeah, not just the money, but of the bottle itself. So yeah, the back's pretty sweet part, deal. The part that you guys don't want. That's right. And they signed that before we even had an episode to show them. So I mean, that's how much faith they have in us. Yeah. Huge shout out to them. Huge shout out. Thanks, Uncle Jed. Fucking thanks. So, um, I think we should uh, get into story time. I think people are gonna still want to know more. About Andrew and Frank, Hova's crazy friends from the past. Um, what's one thing that sticks out in your in your mind, Andrew? You remember any of the crazy shit we did back in the day? Uh, God. Sorry to put you on the spot. By no, the way. no, yeah. Frank, feel uh, free to interject. I mean, I there's there's so many. So, it's like where it's do we funny, start? It's funny because it's like so much of it at the time. It seems like very mundane. So much of the shit <laughs> at the time. No, doing. yeah, I totally agree. Like, I do remember finding a TV on the side of the road and then blowing it up. <laughs> I don't specifically remember that, but I'm sure that we did. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no, I really don't. But we blew so much... <laughs> this video is getting so flagged, but we blew so much shit up in my high school mm-hmm. time, so... Well, I mean, like, it, you, out in the country, people have guns. Like, that is... Yes. That is that a is fact true. of life. That is, it, <laughs> yes. It was just recreational pyrotechnics, okay? That's all it was. It was just recreational pyrotechnics. It was. There, yeah, but to, to, to a city kid, it was, it was very Culture scandalous. shock a little bit, yeah. yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I knew of guns uh, from, like, video games and television, but not, like, not handling them in person, typically. Yeah, we broke in quick on that, I'm sure. Yeah, that changed pretty quickly. Flashbacks to the time that we were sitting around a campfire at my house in the backyard. (laughs) And so as recreational, I'll have to, like, I don't want to toot my own horn and Frank's horn too much. But we were pretty good recreational pyrotechnicians as well. I think because we had probably been doing it since we were, like, 11 or some shit. Yeah, had a lot of experience. Right. Um, you know, started small, go went a little more large scale as we went. But um, I was getting into a, a new genre of, I don't even, debauchery, whatever you want to call it. Um, I found out about dry ice bombs. And uh, yeah, so I was, <laughs> I don't 
I we must have gone. I don't know if you guys went with me. We went to Walmart, uh, yep. scored some dry ice, and uh, had some alcohol, which I don't know how we got at the time because none of us were legal drinking age. I don't think. No. Right? No, no we wouldn't have been. Yeah. Um, totally throwing ourselves under the bus here, but sitting around the campfire, just you know, having some good old boy time, and uh, I decided to make one of those. Dry ice bombs, which I won't go into detail, but it involves a plastic bottle, just a soda bottle. And I made it and shook it up in my hand because the it depends on how you do them. And again, I was like a novice, not even uh, amateur in this. Yeah. This is in some novice. way where it created more gas way too fast. Right. It depends on how much... It depends on how you do it. Sometimes you have to shake them. Sometimes you don't. It's not a good idea to shake it at all. But long story short, I shook it uh, with the intention of throwing it shortly after shaking it. And it went off in my hand. And I remember, if you guys think of like the thick plastic around uh, the, the, the mouth of a bottle, there was a piece of that embedded. I don't remember exactly where it was. But it was somewhere in my arm. And... Uh, yeah, after that, I don't think I ever messed with dry ice again. I think I was kind of done with that. That also did not interrupt the festivities at all, from what I recall. Nope. Not at all. Was it just us three? Yeah, no. it was just... Yeah, no, no it was just three of us. And if no, I remember right, we were, burning, we were burning railroad ties, if I recall correctly. Which Probably. we didn't realize at the time until it was, like, terrifyingly smoky and, like, <laughs> disgusting smoke to be sitting in. Yeah... I, I we remember, were sitting back by those old Chevelles on my property, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The van was out there. You yeah. had another you had another uh another experience. I remember you threw another one of those bombs around and it just like it landed somewhere and then didn't explode. And those and are were, almost scarier than when they do go off in your hand. Well it's a lot scarier. Almost. <laughs> well, I mean it's we were just I remember sitting around very tensely for the next like five to ten minutes sort of waiting to hear the explosion and then of course it happened like while one of us was in the middle of talking and like scared the shit out of me. That was good times. That was a that was a one of our more mild nights too, probably I would say, for sure. I remember that night explicitly though, because I had an ounce of blueberry cough that Oh, I did we in did we mention that Frank is our drug guy? <coughs> like like if a, if we were a news station and I was like the head anchor. Uh, that sounded really big headed. And Andrew's like our sports guy. Sure. And then Frank's our drug guy. So I you know how to, news I, channels have those. I, I used to let's I dabbled a bit back in the day. Just, dabbled. And no, yeah. I Motherfucker failed a drug test uh, and, and didn't make it on our senior trip. Um. Oh, I got He's done everything. A lot, of shit. a lot of stuff. I got kicked off of a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah you did. So, anyways, Wait, you no. had an ounce of what? Some uh, ditchweed? No, blueberry cough. That shit was like <laughs> six hundred bucks an ounce back then. That was uh, that was like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. That was hard to come by in uh, the middle of nowhere, Missouri. That was back when no one had that shit, unless you were in the areas where it was grown. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, they definitely came from California or Colorado. Well, I remember, like, the first couple times I saw weed in my high school years. And, you know, which would have been, like, 2005-ish, around that time. Um, it looked like nothing. I don't know, like, whenever you saw weed in a movie, it was always, like, big, pretty flowers. You know, like, big mm -hmm. buds. And then, like, the first few times that I saw weed, I'm like, what? That's... That looks you nothing like the movies. What is this what about sticky my pasta sauce? What is this wad of green bullshit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It legitimately just looked like spices. But Frank, he rolled around with the good shit. Which how I don't how the fuck did you afford that shit when we were like soft or juniors or whatever? Uh, don't you guys remember at one point I had even worked like three jobs during the summer in high school? Taco or Bell. Dickie Doo, and then I did the soundstage at the State Fair. I didn't know you... I thought you didn't work at Dickie Doo until, like, after school. No. No, it was before and after. I only did that, like, two summers. Oh, uh, okay. And what was the other one? Uh, I did the soundstage at the... Oh, fairgrounds. yeah, for the fair, right? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that guy lose three fingers. <laughs> Jesus. 
How'd that happen? Well, I don't remember that. What's that story? It was at the end uh, of uh, the end of the fair, and we put all those big the big truss work up into the back of the semi truck, and so you got like five or six guys like stacking that shit up on top in the back of the semi, and this old black dude like right in front of me. The guys behind us just pushed without like saying clear. Yeah, wow. and you know where that ends up. So yeah, that was I don't. Maybe he got degloved. Maybe they didn't get chopped off. But it was. Uh, well, you stick the skin off the bone or something. I, I quit after that. I swear. I, actually, that, I swear that ahead. not every single episode of this podcast will involve like incredible finger trauma. Yeah, right. I was about to bring up more. Actually, I've actually <laughs> also seen someone lose a finger at the fair. Uh, the crocodile guy. The like. <laughs> Steve Irwin wannabe, you know, he had he had his booth that year. It was always in like in a different location. It was just like a oh. like a pool with a cage around it, and then there was yeah. like seating, and it happened to be right outside the building where my grandma had a booth, and I was Can helping her. Yeah, yeah. So I was out there watching the show, and he's doing the whole like you know, open the gator's mouth thing, where they like hold the loose skin on the bottom, and then they've got their fingertips like right on that top, whatever on a gator and uh it was one of those things where like he slipped or whatever and instead of just like pulling his hand back he tried to like re-grip and it just fucking got him and he was just and he like looked at the guy because there's there's always like the dude doing the thing and then there's like a guy on the like and this gator fucking snaps its jaws with 1400 fucking pounds of whatever you know and he looked at him and like the guy on the mic realized that it got him and he like dropped the mic real quick and had to go over there and they like wrestled it for a little bit and finally got his mouth open and uh yeah got the tip of his tip of his finger right off lots of lots of finger trauma we're sorry that's the story of uh bob the alligator king uh short career yes (laughs) The the subtitle of this episode is going to be finger trauma i hope so and on that note of apologies um we're obviously we've never done this before so we're just winging it and uh but our but our goal is to just keep doing this and for it to be a weekly thing um hopefully you know as much as we can keep up to that we all do have you know our own shit going on families and all that good stuff but we're going to do our best to to be as regular with this content as possible and you should be able to get this like anywhere and everywhere a podcast uh is available we're gonna we're gonna try to make sure that it's on all of the things and uh, again all the links will be down in the description for uh, anything and everything you need to know about so yeah, there will definitely be some growing pains, but look, think of this as an opportunity to sort of get in on the ground floor. Oh, yeah. Like, invest now, because That's we're right. going to blow the fuck up, bud. Literally give us your money. <laughs> we already have a Patreon. That's, we don't. <laughs> but, Speaking uh, of uh, next money, uh, Andrew, don't you have a, a live read from one of our sponsors you should be? Oh, God. Yeah, I do have one right here. Um, it's really weird that they just mailed it to me, though. It's not like in an email. And it's on a tablet. And a pterodactyl dropped it off or something, you said? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it left a big hole in the roof. Um, and it just says... As they do. Caveman brand fire from the makers of Wheel. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm, I'm down. So thank you, Caveman brand fire. Thank you. Thank you. Truly. Did they send us some? No. <laughs> We're just endorsing it blind. Yeah, well they sent me <coughs> some uh, they sent me some very shiny rocks that I think I will be able to barter. Okay. Well you probably can't even do fire in Brooklyn anyways, so it's probably a good thing they went That's true, fire's illegal here. Yes. Yeah. Fucking damn it, Trump. So many cold meals. <laughs> A lot of gazpachos here. Gazpacho, huh? Yeah. A lot of cold soups. I mean, it got you guys ready for the quarantine, I guess. That's right. Ceviche, anything, yeah, cooked with acid. Ooh. I've tried, uh... proteins. Yeah, I've tried, uh, like, burning out my car tires on some steaks. Okay. Works okay. Okay, yeah. Can't you just find food in the streets there? Well, I mean, sure, but then you have to fight the rats for it. That is true. And they're a lot stronger than you are, typically. Because they've been eating. Yeah. Aren't aren't there, like, crazy videos of rats fighting various other animals? 
There's all kinds of like crazy, particularly like, New York rats. There's all kinds of like crazy rat happenings. Like there's all kinds of rat myths. Of course, we you know about our state mascot, Pizza Rat. Um, okay. I don't actually, but you don't. No. Oh man, it was this big viral story. I'm gonna have to send it to you. It was this big uh, video that happened a couple years ago where it was a like cell phone footage of a rat dragging a slice of pizza down subway steps like into the subway. <laughs> Dude, that's and some that's some so, Ninja Turtle shit for sure. Was exactly. he feeding? Yeah, was he feeding the Donatello and Mike, Michelangelo and all them? Or uh, what? It's, it's uncertain. It's unclear what the rat did with the pizza. That's it's a big hunk of pizza too. That is a wow. It's excite. It's a proper slice. A proper New York slice of pizza. Proper, yeah, New York slice. Damn. <laughs> I've also makes- I've I was listening to some podcast recently. and They were talking about a rat that was like smart enough to out like. He saw a trap, I guess, with like bait in it, and he used a stick, I guess, to set off the trap, and then got the food, nice. which is terrifying, if I'm being honest. You know, I mean, they that's the evolving. last thing we need to worry about these days. We see that you see those stories about like crows who are smart enough now to drop nuts into intersections and then pick up the like inside of the nuts after cars have run them over. Jesus Christ! They're using us as tools. That's that's disgusting. Right. Well, and see- to be frank, we are tools. That's true. Maybe it's maybe it's our purpose. <laughs> I've seen that nut trick though before. That's not something new. That's not a new crow thing. That's exactly how my ne- neighbors feed their kids. So <laughs> the crows are stealing our technology. Oh my god! They just throw like a sack of oranges into the into the road and wait until someone runs it over, and then the yeah, kids go need, to town. You need to crack the oranges first. Well, you know, I was trying to. I mean, what else would you do? You know, I guess fruit. I don't know. They got all kinds of fucking oranges these days because they're all bred to be uh, seedless and all that bullshit. So God only knows what the fuck's going on in our produce section, man. It's fucking terrifying. We're all going to get fucking asbestos off of uh, lettuce and shit anyways, or whatever it is. It's not asbestos. What? I hope not. Uh, (laughs) E. coli. There it is. Two two extremely similar things. That it is. They used to use E. coli to fireproof schools. <laughs> Mr. Asbestos said. <laughs> Is that like an old Mad Magazine joke or some shit? Mr. Asbestos said? Ugh. Just awful. Hey, Joey, mm-hmm. do you remember in the elementary school? Whenever we had... Um, they had that... They, we had like a book club. Like, it was in the old gym. I remember that bitch thumped me in the fucking head. Remember that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what I did, but I just remember her walking over and fucking flicking me in the head like I was a piece of shit. Scarred me for life, dude. I need context for this because I didn't I didn't join your merry crew until high school. So. I remember her fucking name too, but I guess I won't say it. Anyways, what was the book club? I really don't remember any more of the story other than I probably did some dumb shit or said some dumb shit and she like walked over and fucking right like on my forehead. So in the old gymnasium at the elementary school, um, there was oh, seating the rat up on top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a book club up there, uh, like like a couple. I don't, who knows why the hell they did it up there? It makes no sense if you it's think because back. we never used it as seating for anything. So the gym pick, was non defunct. Let's paint a picture for the for yes. the listeners that yes, don't know. Please. So this gym, I mean, I'm assuming you saw it at some point, Andrew, even though you didn't go to the elementary. Did you ever see it or no? I don't think so, no. I don't think I ever did. So this gym is the fucking tiniest gym that I've ever seen personally. I would assume that it's like a regulation basketball court because there was a basketball court in there. But legitimately, I don't know how it ever even like passes a safety test because the walls are like a foot or less from the lines of the basketball court on all sides except for the one long side which would like normally be a school's visiting section mm-hmm. there's this there's a stage for like then, you know they, for like a play or whatever in. they then walked yeah. in though to put a music class right? right exactly they made it into a classroom eventually so there's just literally a wall there like i said like i it, i want to say a foot it might be less it always seemed to me like it was like six eight inches something like that it's like in- incredibly close and then on the other side was another brick wall, but then for some reason, there's like a six foot brick wall. <laughs> yeah, something like a ten foot fucking brick wall, and then the seating started 
on on the home side. You're but like down in a pit. Yeah, yeah, but I'm pretty sure they always just used any sporting event that ever happened. They would just use the high school. I, I don't remember ever seeing or hearing about an event where there was people sitting up there. Um, so, yeah, they turned it into some, like, weird, like, it. I don't know. It was a super creepy reading club area and, or something. They had, like, bean bags and bookshelves and shit up there. But we had, like, copies yeah. of Mad Magazine somehow. Somehow. Do you remember the <laughs> copies of Mad Magazine? I don't, actually. Incredibly irresponsible. Yeah, for us. <laughs> yeah. I blame the schools. I mean, that's why we all turned out the way we turned out, probably. God damn it. Our last two years at the elementary school, we were in trailers. Yeah. Yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah. We but actually... it, it was because they were building on to the school, so the, the, tra the trailers were, like, temporary. Uh, but we didn't have access to the actual building itself unless we, like, walked all the way around the outside of the building into the school to, like, use the restroom or eat lunch or see other people. So it was kind of traumatizing a bit, yeah. We had a water fountain, though, that I got banned from in the sixth grade. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> because uh, I would notoriously <laughs> belch. Every time after I had a drink, I just, I don't know if I have a condition. I just swallow too much air because I'm a fucking idiot or what. Uh, I was probably, you know, showing off a little bit and everything too, but I would always burp after I got a drink and, uh, yeah, so she fucking banned me from the water cooler, I think for the rest of the year. I almost flunked out sixth grade too. I, had I feel a like very... it would actually take effort to get banned from a water fountain. Like you had it, to, there had to probably, be intention at some point. Yeah, I probably gave a little bit of intention. I would he assume. Was, and they were so cold in there. He was denied heat and water and a restroom. <laughs> Technically, he's not lying. Were you you were in that class with me, or were you in the other one? I don't remember, I Frank. Don't, I don't remember. Well, who did... I, B? Was there... Should we say... It doesn't matter. Is anybody going to, like, we, fucking look her no, up? Is she still a teacher out the there? Names, but there was, um, there was a big one and a skinny one. The skinny right. one, the skinny tall one, was mine. I was the second tall. trailer. Okay. Yes, the back, Me too. the back trailer. The trailer yeah, in the, the back. back. Of, but... Okay, so we were both in the same. Yeah. All I remember in that trailer was not learning, but uh, <laughs> counting pennies or pop yes. tabs. Pop, pop tabs. tabs. Disgusting. We had the Ronald McDonald pop tab charity thing. We would uh, like. I think it was like every Friday. We would get to count, instead of, like, doing normal work, we would fucking count pop tabs all fucking day. It was like a sweatshop, I swear to God. It was just, like, trash bag after trash bag full of fucking pop tabs. And we would count these goddamn pop tabs because they were worth a penny each or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we would just sit there, and then we would get to listen to the radio, too. Do you remember the song that came on, Frank, that got us banned from the radio? Uh, probably, uh... Sugar. Crazy Town's Sugar. Butterfly. Sugar, Butterfly. baby. Yep, that song, whatever that shit is. Yep, I, I will never forget that song coming on, and her face was like, <gasps> when she realized, like, what the lyrics were about, and we were all like, ha! Ah! And she turned that shit off, and it never came back on, but it was good times. Well, who's going to get that, like, butthurt over a song that's on public radio? Her. <laughs> she, was, she was a tight ass. Like, just total square. Yeah. It was bad. Which and and Frank and I being in that environment, you can imagine, we didn't. Uh, sure, we, we clashed didn't make a little it easy bit. On her. Mm -mm. No, not exactly. But we made it, man. That's all that matters. I remember having a sit down with my mother and her, um, and she was basically like, "Look, if he doesn't get his shit together, and you know, start getting grades better than F's, then he's gonna stay here, and all his friends are gonna go to high school next year." And I was like, "Fuck." And then I got my shit together and obviously made it to high school. So you're welcome because you guys wouldn't, you know, it's maybe a, we, we wouldn't be doing the gravy wheels. It's a real, uh, that. it's a real touching story. <laughs> Thank you. Of one person finally making it to high school. <laughs> <laughs> I barely made it. God damn it. Barely. <laughs> it's not like I can talk shit though. My, my academic career was not uh, anything to write home about. Dude, I honestly forgot that like you didn't graduate until Frank brought it up the other day. Yeah. Yeah, to let you kids in at home, I uh, failed my junior year. Uh, no, 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 I failed my senior year. Then I had two, I had two senior years. 
and I ended up dropping out halfway through my second one because I was just real tired of this shit. Yeah, understandably. So, I mean, with the shit that you went from and then went to, obviously that's no excuse to just, like, fucking give up or whatever, but I can definitely yeah. see it being hard, you know? No, but, but, I mean, it was my fault. I mean, it was, like... I remember I, you sleeping a lot. I did a lot of sleeping in class. I did a lot <laughs> of sort of intentional dicking around. I was also, like, people just assumed... Like, I was also, like, a pretty... Like, a, I wouldn't say straight edge, but I was, like not a kid that like got into shit in high school same for the most, for the part. most part until later <laughs> fuck you frank but <laughs> but like <clears throat> at that time people 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 made assumptions about me based on like i when i moved out to to there i had like long hair or <laughs> flip-flops all the time and and and, and, and what and <laughs> don't even you know no, no, I want to, what, that I had a bowler hat? <laughs> <laughs> it was a gift from my then-girlfriend, and I was very happy about it. Yep, yes he was, was and he it, wore it every single day to school, during not, school. That is not true. That's how I remember it, goddammit, every no, single there thing. Was, there was, we had a spirit week at school. That's what it is, because I always see that picture, and I'm like, oh, yep, there's Andrew and his fucking bowler, as always. The way it was set up was that every day you could wear a hat, but each day had a different theme, so you had to. You were supposed to wear a different hat that matched the theme for that day. And it was and our so, class day. That's right. And it, and it was black and white. And for the whole week, I just kept coming up with new reasons why a bowler worked for that day's theme. <laughs> oh, the, okay. The principal, the principal did call me in the <sighs> office one day, though, where it was a, a sports-themed day. So all the caps we were wearing were supposed to be sports-themed. And he was like, okay, tie this to sports. <laughs> And I was like, it's the Celtics mascot. And he was like, they're the Celtics. Like, it doesn't matter. I'm still right. Oh, shit. And it was pretty clear that he just didn't want to fucking fight with this asshole teenager and let me let me get away with it. He was I, pretty cool, though. Like, he would he would bust your balls when he needed to. But for the most part, he was like, yeah. I don't fucking care what you guys do. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's the talks you guys got. I got the Frank. I'm very disappointed in you. Says so the guy that would this. fucking. How many times, honestly, did you come to school with drugs? On me or in the parking lot in my vehicle? <laughs> I mean, that answer right there kind yeah. of sums it up, you know? I mean. But sure, elaborate if however Whatever. you want to. I never, I never sold drugs. I never forced anybody to do drugs. You're I, right. I did drugs. I, I did not do that. <laughs> Mountains of them. Hmm, um, yeah. So, let's go into uh, a Frank story. You guys can tell from your perspective, because I know my truth, okay? Uh, <laughs> Why do I feel like we're getting set up for something here? <laughs> the video game Prey. Sure. Mm, yes. Fill everybody yes. in uh, on that time. So, I, I think some of, some of these listeners might already know a, a bit of this story, because this is a story that I've told a lot of people over what? a lot of the years. I mean, uh, let's be that's honest. That's my IP. You're, 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 you're... <laughs> yes. I've never sold t-shirts, asshole. Okay, I've just mentioned the fact that we may or may not have Doesn't been matter. playing... You get the cut. <laughs> that's true. God damn it. Um, we'll figure that out. But, uh, so... Okay, so... I grew up going over to Andrews a lot. Like, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Um, I didn't have high-speed internet at my house. Andrew did. He was the golden child of the internet. So we ended up congregating at his house a lot. Mostly because my house was a shithole. Um, my mother basically is a hoarder. And it was all... I mean, regardless of how she was, the house was fucking like the size of this room. And it was uh, Frank's house uh, was scary because of his dad. Um, so we would end up at Andrew's all the time. Anyways, we were hanging over uh, at Andrew's one night. And I believe I was playing Prey. I don't know if Andrew was just watching, or he, you were probably playing whatever your, your own shit. Probably, I don't know. Yeah, um, this might have I mean, even been before I had an Xbox 360 because there was a while there where you had one and nobody else did. Oh, really? So maybe we were just all huddled around, like super awkward, just watching one person play. So uh, yeah, so I'm playing Prey. If you guys don't remember, they just did a, a new Prey. Um, 
like same IP or whatever, but it was kind of a totally different thing, I think. I can't remember how the newest one is, honestly. They have like, they're like the same title, but I don't know if they're having yeah. like tie-ins. They're like, they're not really related at all. Yeah, they're like same but different, you know, like James Franco. Anyways, uh, so this the one that we were playing back in the day was like very uh, spiritual. You were, I believe, like a, a Native American character, and it was a lot of it was like about like uh, the spirit and and like a, I remember there was like a hawk or something I think, and um, you could go into like these trippy modes where you could walk on the ceiling, and there was like maybe even elements of magic. I can't remember exactly. There was like there was like some non there was like non Euclidean geometry going on in it. Like this was before Portal came out, so like yes. seeing a hole in something that like was nuts. opened up into a massive other space was like very confusing at the time. It was very new, right? It was very novel. If you're sober, sure. Yes, and then basically, uh, Frank just saw it as a really good time to. He happened to have drugs on him, um, and they just happened to be acid, and uh, yeah, so he was he dropped some acid, and he was enjoying it quite a lot watching watching us play through Prey, which was, you know, an experience, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, in that mindset. And uh, I just remember sitting there playing, and at one point, he, like, stood up on top of your futon, I think, to reach the... I, at first, I'm like, the fuck is going on? And then I realized that he had unscrewed the, the light fixture thing to gather dead moths inside the light fixture to eat them while he was tripping on acid. And uh, that's a night that I will never forget. I'm looking up the uh, Frank. Feel free to elaborate on that. Yeah, so that's not what happened at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know my truth. That's their side of the story, but that's uh, I don't think that's exactly what happened. Okay. Um, like he said, we always congregated at Andrews because he had like the fastest internet somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though I lived in the shittiest town, I did have the best internet. Bit torn for days. I would just go over there just to pirate stuff. <clears throat> and so, I don't know, I had a few hits of acid on me, and uh, one of my favorite ways to do it was uh, put the tabs in a water bottle, shake it up, let it sit, shake it up, and then just chug it. And a uh, couple hours later, I remember, um, you know what would be funny? If we made Frank play Prey. And I tried to play the intro of Prey, and I had a mental breakdown, and I could not do it. Uh, so Prey was inflicted upon you. Yeah, I was the victim in this story. So you were um, forever scarred by that. I I have very little recollection of this story, so I'm I'm just taking it in. And it happened at I, your house. Oh, can no, we I know, also? Let's let Andrew explain why that situation was even more uh, taboo in the setting can of we? it, just the fact that it was your can house. We? Can we? Or, can, yeah. or can we? No, it's fine. Who, you don't have to. Don't, 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 if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. My, uh, at the time, the house that I lived in, where all this was <laughs> taking place, was a parsonage. And so, you know, any kind of debauchery that took, any took at all there was even worse than he thought about it every time he masturbated. <laughs> That's right. Every Still do. Time. Got a weird burning <laughs> sensation. It kind of helped. So I had to look it up uh, just because I was curious. It looks like Prey came out in North America July 11th, 2006. And Portal came out October 10th, 2007. Very, very good. You, you nailed it, man. I wasn't sure. I knew it was close. I did not, not believe you, but I just had yeah, to see it for myself. No, I, yeah, I just have memories of when Portal coming out and being like, I've seen this exactly one time before. Right. But it's like, in, in Portal, the whole gimmick is that you can control where that shit goes, but in Ray, right. right, it's just like part of the environment. It's just sort of... Portal was so fucking, like, mind-blowing when that shit came out, man. So fucking good. The orange box, just everything in the orange box was fantastic, let's be honest. Still, still one of the, like, absolute greatest deals in video gaming history. Yeah, wasn't it 20 bucks? Or was it like forty? I think it was twenty. Well, even no matter how much it was, you still got like Team Fortress and P That's Portal. That's true. Even if it was a sixty dollars title. Did it because Team Fortress Two was also was it? I can't remember. But Team Fortress Two was like, I mean, that was a full-on multiplayer experience. I think that was what yeah. I mostly got it for, is because I was like 
I'm all about the shooters and I just wanted to play that and then Portal. I love those like in gaming, those experiences are some of the best whenever you buy something with the intentions of, you know, like focusing on this and then you're like, holy shit, this is fucking great, you know? Like mm-hmm. the only other time I remember that happening was with uh, Crackdown. You remember why everyone bought Crackdown specifically? Didn't it come with like a Came- demo for something? Yes. For a with pretty a demo for like Halo big, 3 or some shit. Yeah. Halo 3 uh, beta, multiplayer beta, is what Crackdown okay. came with. So everybody was like, oh, I don't give a fuck what this game is. I'm buying it because Halo 2 was obviously like the biggest fucking success ever at the time. And uh, yeah, everybody bought that shit. And then Crackdown was actually like really fucking good. You know, it was like a, a fresh yeah. spin on GTA. And there was like, what I loved about it was the. Um, they, they kind of took the, like, weird side objectives part of GTA. Like, with GTA, you had the hidden packages, which was, like, cool, but it was just mm-hmm. a package at the end of the day. But they did the same thing with the orbs. And, if you know, as you collected the agility orbs, obviously, you'd, you'd get more agile. You'd climb higher, jump fat, you know, further, whatever, all that shit. And, like, specifically, I remember getting to the top of the agency building, which was the highest building in the game, was one of the yeah. achievements. And, like, obviously, you couldn't do that unless you fucking maxed out all your shit. <coughs> So then you get out all your shit max, you get the achievement for getting to the top, and then there was another achievement for jumping into like a small puddle of water at the base of the fucking tower. Mm. There's just so many cool things that that game did right. The I, sequels I remember, were kind of, eh, but well, that was like around the dawn of achievements too, and I remember yes, the like yeah. Crackdown had this too because it, it had a specific sound effect that would play every time you would pick up one of those orbs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so I remember. Sp- really specifically the like dopamine hit you would get when you would hear the sound right. from either getting one of those early achievements or picking up one of those orbs they they made they did a really good job of just making it satisfying you know making you feel yeah. like you really accomplished something it was, was like, it was done very well i was just thinking of other there's a do you remember the game zone of enders it was a ps2 game yes no well, the only reason anybody bought it was because it came with the demo for metal gear solid 2 <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably why I don't remember it. Exactly. Was it's, it PlayStation? I'm assuming. Yeah, it was a PS2 game. It was um, <laughs> like a mecha. It was like a mecha game. I think it was. Yeah. Don't me. Just going to the liquor store. Say with Frank and I. Right it was a mecha game, and I don't remember if it was cell shaded or not. But I remember playing it. I can't remember anything about it. But no. it was. It was something. It was a mecha game. It was a space. Con- it was like a, a spacey mecha type game. Yeah, it was like a. It, it had a kind of a distinct visual style, but it wasn't cell shaded. It also was notable for all of the like the cockpits for the giant robots you were flying around. All their cockpits were like in their crotch and were very clearly like massive phalluses. Nice. Google it. Sounds sounds like something I'd be into. Go to Google and type in massive What's phalluses. That? Oh, uh, you know, will come right up. He doesn't even have to go to Google. That's bookmark, bro. That's true. I think Frank and I almost spent more time on demos uh, than we did actual games, like, in our early years. We did. PlayStation demos we really did. were yeah. a heavy oh, yeah. part of our childhood. They were, man. We were just talking about that the other day. What was, what was the... Uh, what was the one like mech game or whatever? Not it wasn't mech. It was like an overhead view. You know what I'm talking Silent about? Silent bomber. It was Silent bomber. Oh my bomber. god, dude! We would just. I I remember that shit being so hard, like so hard. I mean, we had ended up getting better at it because we played through the demo like a thousand times, like legitimately. But uh, man, that game was fun, man. It was basically just like a spam shooter, or whatever, right? Uh, yeah, it was I was trying to like think like what weird, the gameplay looked like. It was like a weird shooter bomberman thing, and you were fighting like mechs and stuff. I later on I bought it, and it was absolute dog shit. <laughs> That's how that shit goes. The stuff that you remember being amazing, and then you go back to it, and you're like, Ugh. yeah. We spent a lot of time. I remember playing Jet Moto too, demo, mm-hmm. just for way too long. Yeah, and that then, was like ninety nine two thousand. Twisted Metal. Three or four, one of the two. It was like an hour long, forty minute demo or something. We would just play yeah. it over and over and over and over. I think and four we... was on PS2. Was it on I PS2? It was... That sounds too. I think three. four was technically Twisted Metal Black. Oh really? I, I thought there was Twisted Metal Four. Maybe I don't know. All right, I'll do it. I'll do a joke. <laughs> but uh, in other news, um, 
Yeah, there Something was a legit four. Well, there was. You're, there was. You're right. I was wrong. We had found at one point though is at some point somebody rented a copy of like GTA or GTA Two because we couldn't buy it. Somehow, like somebody, like my brother rented it or something like that. But we found out that if you played it and in a certain spot, if you opened the disc up, the top up, you could pull the GTA Two disc out and you could keep playing forever until you shut the game off. Right. So yeah. We did that a lot. Yeah. Fr so Frank was kind of like our hacker buddy. Like, he wasn't too deep into the weeds or anything, but there was definitely some shit that he could do that I, like, didn't have a grasp of. I, I remember. Yeah. I remember specifically, Frank, uh, we were in a speech class. Were you in that class, Andrew? Uh, you're going to have to give me more. It was just a it was a speech class where we had to write speeches and then perform a speech in front of the class. And uh you probably were asleep if you were in there. But uh <laughs> I don't rec I don't recall taking speech in high school. Okay, yeah. Well, we did because we were forced to. I think it was counted as like an English credit or whatever, but more or less like I don't think Frank and I would have been in there if we didn't have to be. But I remember Frank brought uh, a Sega Dreamcast and his speech was like we would always find ways to kind of like bullshit around the actual assignment and just do something that we wanted to do. I had and, the Dreamcast with all the MU discs. Yeah, you, you brought oh, in a Dreamcast, yeah. and your speech was it was an informative speech, is what it was. Your loophole was like you <laughs> presented the class like this is how you play ROMs and emulators on a Dreamcast, and it was fucking badass. It's like <laughs> it, we're sitting there in high school, and you got you figured out a way to get a grade uh you know for an english credit on uh playing video pirating. games essentially. Pirating. Pirating. and pirating it's yeah, pirating. yeah. <laughs> right that too i, I still have that, that i still have that dreamcast too fuck yeah dude because dreamcasts were awesome they could if if you guys don't know anything will boot on a dreamcast they, had, they like didn't no, put like security no on it at all direction. literally cd roms you could burn roms and emulators Wait, didn't you have to put the emulator on one disc and boot it up on that, Frank, and then put in the emulator's disc? Wasn't there something like that? No, I think that was what we had to do for the PlayStations. Oh, okay. But still, yeah. The Dreamcast, man. Good times. Good, good times. Frank and I were also in a gifted class because somehow we... Wait, you were in it, right, Frank? Uh, yeah, until I got fucking kicked out. That's right, yeah, you got kissy <laughs> got kicked out of so much shit. <laughs> so get this, my dumbass, somehow, supposedly, they told us, like, they called us all over the intercom, I think, you know, to, like, fucking a room. And we thought we were in trouble or some shit, and then we heard some of the other names they were calling, and we're like, what, this is, like, the goody-two-shoe, like, smart kids. And we get in there, and they <laughs> tell us that we scored over a certain percentage on a test. Was it the map test? I don't remember what Nobody test it was. Knows. This is a goddamn scam, and I got kicked it was, out. It was, it was some sort of a scam. I think they just needed two, like, normal people <clears throat> in with the other people. But anyways, we ended up in this gifted class, and, uh, yeah, we, we found out a way real quick to turn that into we would literally bring Game Boy Advances every day and System Link on Game Boy Advances, which it's some of you... fucking cable! <laughs> some of oh, you... Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of you young bloods might not know that that's a thing, but you could actually system link a Game Boy Advance and play Mario Kart Circuit. And not only could you fucking system link that shit, you didn't even need four cartridges. You could only use one. Now you were limited to I think four four tracks, uh, and if you had all of them, then you could you could you know access the other maps and shit too. But man, we would just sit there and fucking play Mario Kart every day. It was fucking amazing. I loved it. I got kicked out. I yeah. How? Yeah, uh, we were in one of the computer labs. Not I remember the, main... the teacher didn't like you, the specific teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't know. Something happened, and I think I something. hid hid under a computer desk because somebody was like trying to punch me or something, and I got fucking kicked out. And I know who it was. We're not going to go into that. That's that's why Mister um, the Spanish teacher. Uh, yeah. I got, You're not I saying it was I, I, it wasn't me trying to punch you. No, it wasn't you. It was somebody else. Okay. I'm not going to bring up their name. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Now and I'm curious. What else did I get kicked out of? Uh... You almost got kicked off being the TA for our gym coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's the whole story. The whole life story is just being removed from things. Yep, pretty much. That's. But I'm not a bad guy. I don't do criminal <laughs> things. I mean, I, I just. Well. <laughs> I mean, yes. Well... Yeah, but I I don't rob people. I don't I don't you know kill kids. I don't have a collection of small children's shoes in my closet. Or I think everything like you're that. saying right now is more self-incriminating than it is <laughs> anything else. Yeah. Do you remember whenever I got kicked off of all of the school networks for a year? Yes, because you sent a message to everyone in the school, every computer in the school. And the and elementary they didn't, and that, And that was scary to them. They did not know how to handle that. <laughs> you have to understand, again, there was 30 kids in our entire fucking class. So there was like, I think between the elementary and the high school, there was, you know, there, there's a few hundred people, staff included. Bullshit. So when Frank hacked the network and sent a fucking text message that popped up on every system in the school, teachers, computers, student computers, everything, you know, it wasn't a good, it, it was, it was very scary. I don't even know if we had, did we have like a IT guy at that time? It was somebody's mother who was not very tech oriented. Supposedly okay. she was, but she was not. So um, <laughs> the message, the message that I sent, by the way, was "Hola, cómo está? Is anyone out there?" And that went to the high school and to the elementary school. I'd like to say that I was also using some of my Spanish class um, to this. You and were. I, it's true. I, it is. I just poked a hole in their network security and. Um, I got banned for computers for the rest of the year, so I could not touch a fucking computer. I was like that guy in Swordfish. I mean, at least, I mean, if we're being honest, like, you didn't do, yeah, you just were like, hola, como esta? You could have sent, like, a dick pic or, like, some lemon party shit, you know, Which was to everybody, cer but. Certainly coming at some point. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen. I did nothing wrong. I feel I, I, that entire my entire childhood, I have just been per persecuted for for being smarter than uh, your average monkey. And uh, whatever, that's bullshit. I got kicked off of everything. Thanks for bringing up these fucking repressed memories. <laughs> that's what this is for. This is it's like our therapy too. It's free. Yeah. Think of it that way. Except you guys can't give me medication. Technically, legally. Not the not the kind I need. Okay. But if any listeners out there have any prescription drugs, <laughs> keep them to yourself because sharing drugs is not okay. We don't have a PO box yet, anyway. So <laughs> soon, you know, maybe by next no. couple episodes, we'll figure that out. No, 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 no. Okay, no. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. So these assholes both bailed on the senior trip. I had to go all by myself. I, bailed is like a strong way of putting that. <laughs> Maybe not. I was so not allowed to go because my grades were a terrible. A dog shit. Yeah. Yes. We all, we all, let's be honest though. It wasn't, I mean, I think we all kind of went through that. I don't know what Frank's grades were like actually, but I know I had that. I had that situation come up with football. They, they were like, you know, you got to keep your, you got to be a little bit better on your grades if you want to keep playing football. And then I had to get my shit together for that. And that if I honestly, like I always think back to that, if I didn't have football, man, I wouldn't have given too far. I would have been probably in the same boat that you were in. I would end up doing my senior year over just like you did. I remember there was one year. I can't even remember which year I was, <laughs> it was that I was there, but there they had a really strict attendance policy. Yes. And if you missed more than 10 days, you were, like, eligible to lose all of your credits for that semester. That's, that isn't that what it was? I think you missed more days than your grades were bad, wasn't it? Like, you missed I mean, a lot. I mean, I mean, both were the problem. There was one specific right. year where I did have to, like, come in to, like, a board meeting or whatever and, like, argue that I should be able to keep my shitty, shitty grades. Hmm. Like just because keeping them would be better than them being just like nullified. Well, yeah, exactly. It's like I'll take the the two C's I got, and they're you know, right. I'll just carry those and PE they, and yeah, I'm like, and well, like I I I'm already like my grades are shit. It's like why would you why would you penalize me even further? I've clearly like done all the damage to myself already. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's kind I, of ludicrous that I, I honestly think that you got a little bit of the stick 
of like they you were the weird outsider kid you know what i mean and like who hung out with the pyromaniac and the drug addict exactly <laughs> yeah so there and let's be honest man that school district if like outsiders would get pushed out even if it was like unintentional you know what i mean it, it yeah. was it's definitely a thing where sometimes when new people came in if not everybody under even just understood you know that person and kind of what they were about it seemed like there was kind of a, a strong push of like get the fuck out of here so that yeah. probably didn't help your case either no I remember. not that you were a bad kid in any other you know it's not like you were running around vandalizing or anything no, no, no. I was always, like, pretty good. I was never, like... I don't ever remember, like, causing trouble or anything like that in school. I was just more asleep than anything else. Or yeah. playing with your roller hat. Or not there. Or not there. Yeah. I liked the bowler hat. It's what <laughs> defined you. So did I. It was fucking I, sick, dude. I remember wearing a fake mustache to some school. Yes. Yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Frank, I think, had, like, really long hair at one point, too, didn't you? The, the Sandberg. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then I rocked that a few years later up at the college with all the Air Force people, and they always would call me uh, fucking Hot Rod. Hot Rod was my nickname to all the Whiteman people. Dude, I mean, you fit that bill, though. Let's be honest. Can we just appreciate appreciate how fucking good that movie was, by the way? It's oh, fucking cool beans, man. It's super, super underrated. Cool, cool. cool. It's cool so fucking good. That was like before he was big. I think. I mean, I guess that probably that movie specifically probably helped I, a lot. But I, I have gone on to enjoy many, many Lonely Island things, but Hot Rod will always hold a special place in my heart. What did I just? I just watched something where he was like the older brother, and it was super fucking. Like his part was fairly minor but it was really good did Fuck. you watch it did you watch the unauthorized bash bros experience no what's that yes yeah yeah you'll have to check that out. it's on netflix it's a half hour long it's a lonely island like music uh, vi visual album i guess but the whole concept is that andy sandberg plays uh fuck jose canseco and uh Akiva Schaffer plays uh, Mark McGuire, and it's about them like what in the eighties the doing steroids and playing for the A's. It's, a, it's like ah. a Mocky series musical. It's fucking great. It's really good. I might have. What's it called? I've seen something about uh, like Bash steroid Bros. use. What is the it? The unauthorized Bash Bros. Experience. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm thinking of something else, but yeah, that sounds like something I'd definitely be into. Yeah. Just in just the music's great. The it, the whole thing it just works. I mean, yeah, with him in it, I can't imagine it going wrong. There's been a lot of those, like, musical, like, rock operas or whatever coming out lately. I don't really know what to think about them. I, saw, I watched the, um, uh, Fuck the Piano Man or whatever. What's that one called? Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. one. That one was good. I don't know if you guys saw that. The Pianist? Huh? I like to see no. Rocket Man. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It's a Rocket good Man one. Rocket Man starring, uh... Starring, what's his name? Harlan Williams. Thank you, Harlan Williams. The old, where he like, isn't there a scene in that where he like farts and the fart goes down the? Dude, that I couldn't with that movie. The, the poster image for that movie was him in a suit that was like completely <laughs> circular. Yeah, yeah, because he farted, right? Yeah, he that was it, like the whole. Filled it with yeah. his farts. Is it is it actually a good movie? Because sometimes there's shitty. What I think of as a shitty movie that you know I'm like I need to go back and give it another chance. I've never saw it. Oh, okay. So what? it's probably shit. <laughs> no, if it was bad, then I definitely would have seen it. He was all he, into the bad movies. He was great and half baked. That he was, was him, great right? and dumb and dumber. Yeah. He's I like him. He he's good in a lot of things, man. You seen the new Dumb and Dumber? No. That's a big <laughs> note for me. <laughs> that just like really took the tone to a new Well, I had to remember what you were did Jim like Carrey come back and do another one? Yes. And, no, uh, I did not, I did not see that one. I have not seen it. I honestly don't have any intention to. I probably will eventually. Let's just cut this part out. Let's just cut this part out. Because <laughs> that movie it's is just... depressing. It is very depressing. 
I can't believe that that even happened, to be honest. I think I'm just going to leave the memory of the original, you know what I mean, and not tarnish it, because fuck all that. Leave it, yeah, leave it pristine. I did see the one with, like, the young actors, though, and that was really bad as well. Yeah, really fucking bad. I think I saw that in theaters. It wasn't anything to be excited about at all, but, uh, yeah. Well, guys, also, do you have anything to, uh, go ahead, Frank. No, no, I was just, uh, on the topic of, uh, Harlan Williams, uh, Puppy Dog Pals is a really good show for your children that he's a co-creator and a voice on. Okay. So get, get your kids watching some Harlan Williams Young. I prefer I the Land that, Before Time series. All 36 of them. I'd take that advice with a grain of salt considering who it's coming from. Yeah. I don't, I don't get what that... What does that mean? Nothing. <laughs> well, guys, I think uh, we've come to the point where we're going to call it a wrap for episode one. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to us idiots. And if you're interested in, in listening to more, um, definitely hit the subscribe button on the new channel and all the social medias and stuff like that. Also, please hit us up on our new Twitter account, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, comment section here, uh, mm -hmm. wherever you happen to be watching or listening. And let us know what you like, what you don't like, um, if or if not Frank should show his severed um, mummified finger and all of the things. We're definitely looking for feedback is what I'm trying to get to because obviously yeah. none of us have done this before but we just want to do it for fun and we hope that some of you guys maybe a few of you uh, you know, will tag along for the ride basically. So, Anything you guys want to say? I, I think that's it, man. That's fucking all she wrote. Frank? You good, man? Oh, I'm fantastic. Fan-fucking-tastic, bud? Yeah, I'm super duper. I'm just... All right, we got to think of a sign off. What's our sign off? Gravy wheels out on three. No, no, no. 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 I think we just, I think we just let it peter out sadly and just kind of die. I like somebody does something. One of them I listen to. They they give the guest. We don't have a guest. Fuck. This idea is going bad. They let the guests say one word to sign it out. So, Andrew, give us one word to end it on. Spumoni. <laughs>